testing with Civi CRM. I'm Tim Otten. I think you all know me. I'm with the core team. You can find me on GitHub and Mattermost as Totten or email totten at civicrm.org. Um, you've got a small outline, and we're going to begin with testing 101, first principles first, and then proceed academically into more difficult subjects. Um, and eventually we'll get into the practicum. And I, I expect we'll spend most of our time on the practical exercises. But first we need a little bit of classroom work. And so I wanted to begin with the first principles first, even though this is a Civi CRM conference. So I think a lot of you coming in dealing with Civi CRM, you want to know what's the Civi way? And I don't want to tell you what the Civi way is because I, I want to make sure that we all understand testing um, to begin with. And that's because uh, Civi is a very large ecosystem and it's very diverse. Many e uh, use cases are out there a lot. And when you um, go online and you research testing, you're going to find a lot of different tools and a lot of marketing buzz around those tools. And just having some basic foundation to assess that stuff will help. Um, if you are finding yourself unhappy with Civi's testing in the future, it may be bugs, but it's also quite likely that there's been some miscommunication on the, the basics. So we'll cover that. Testing 101, why test? So I needed to draw a chart about the importance of testing and I had to begin somewhere. And Civi CRM is a software system, but there are many systems out there. We could be talking about Drupal or Salesforce or Android or whatever. It's the system and the system begins um, with some developer working on it. Alice is a very happy, friendly developer. She creates some screens, shares them with her users. The users like it. Everyone's happy, right? And when the users say, uh, we need a change, Alice makes the change. And it just works. It's great. Uh, it works mostly because Alice, the single developer, understands the system. The system is so successful that other developers get involved. So Bob and Carol and Dave, they come in and they start making changes and they start having ideas, which uh, is where things start to break down because we wind up having a lot of communication between these guys. Alice makes a change and she needs to check in with Bob to see if this change still looks okay. And Carol asks Dave if it's still working after her patch is merged. And Bob yells at Dave because Dave merged a patch that broke the system. And Carol merges a patch that looks mostly good. It works for her nine times out of 10, but there's that one edge case that she couldn't quite handle. And so she says, please, Alice, pardon my bugs. It's, it's not perfect. Um, so that's, that's tricky. And the system is becoming bigger, right? This is when, when testing becomes pretty helpful. Before I talk more about testing, I want to make a note about versioning, because versioning is another uh, process that mitigates this. Um, it, in theory, Alice can be using version 1, Bob can be using version 2, and he makes his changes. Alice is happy. Nothing effect breaks her system. But versioning essentially acts as a buffer. It gives you a time delay between when Alice and Bob have their conflict. So when Alice does the upgrade to version 2, that's when you get problems. So the material that we have on testing is still relevant even when you have versioning. It's just that we're not thinking about that buffer that plays in between. So in theory, tests, we add a new part to the system. The tests uh, are the main thing that Alice and Bob and Carol and Dave communicate with. They don't have to communicate quite as much with each other. Um, which means we have less of this back scatter. Um, so in theory, Alice makes a change. She runs it through the tests. They pass, and then the change gets persisted to the system. And Bob and Carol and Dave can do whatever they want as long as it still passes the tests. <coughs> We could have a process without tests. We could just rely on versioning. We could rely on manual communication. But the great thing about tests is that they are automated. And so the computer can spit back a result within 10 minutes or half an hour or some fixed predictable period of time. And you get uh, feedback on whether the, the patch is safe to merge. So it actually makes the process more agile. <clears throat> is there anything magical about those tests, right? Like, this is a really big picture uh, chart, right? The system, the tests. 
And when you look at those tests there, you might think that there's got to be some secret trick. But I think that they aren't actually um, superhuman exercises, right? You, they're more like Swiss cheese. Um, no test is perfect. Every test has flaws. If you show me a test, I can usually find or design some bug that will pass that test, but still be a bug. Um, and that's okay, because the theory with testing is that we have many of them. And if a bug passes through all of the tests, um, that's going to be very improbable. Most of the time, one of the tests or another will catch on to the, the problem. So how do we break that down? What do our slices look like in the Swiss cheese model? Um, our applications have layers to them. They have slices. And so we can start out, ooh, that's not coming through with colors. That's OK. Uh, we start out with just a quick view of application architecture. You start out at the bottom with classes and functions written in PHP code or Java code or JavaScript. And a bunch of classes or functions put together make up a library. Uh, we also have modules, which are very similar to libraries, but I want to point them out um, as something slightly different because we test them a bit differently. Libraries are usually idealized as a collection of classes. If you uh, deal with a library, you could just pick one class out of that library, and that's what you're concerned with. Modules fit into a much bigger system. So you cannot run a module unless you have some other large service, some other large module um, active and enabled. <clears throat> These kinds of differences lead to different styles of testing. So we have unit testing, which is traditionally focused on an individual uh, file or an individual function or an individual class. So that's what unit means, some uh, small technical unit. Integration testing focuses across multiple units. So when you run an extension inside of Civi CRM, which is plugged into a CMS, which is connecting to a database and also sending email, you've got four or five different units in that schema. And we also have user testing, where a computer isn't really involved, but you sit a person down and you have them look at the software. They try out the entire application and see if it solves the problem that they're trying to solve. Um, user testing takes a lot more time and it takes more people. <coughs> So we're focused more on integration testing and unit testing in this presentation. Uh, when you dig into the literature or when I talk or other developers talk uh, casually, we will use a lot of terms that mean roughly these things. And so I just want to highlight a few of the synonyms. Um, user testing can be manual testing or acceptance testing. Integration testing might be web or selenium or what is it? End-to-end, -end, headless, those are all for variations on integration testing. The phrase unit testing is a bit of a wild card when we speak. Um, this is an accident of history and technology. So in theory, a unit test is focused on a class or a function. In practice, the tools which we use to write unit tests are the same tools we use to write integration tests uh, very often, which means that we might be using a tool called PHP unit to run our integration test. A little bit confusing, but it means that when we speak loosely, all tests can be referred to as unit tests. All right, so let's do a quick um, example of a unit test, just by itself without Civi. Is that big enough? Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to make a uh, testing exercise. It's a folder. It could, it could be anywhere. I'm going to do it inside of my web root because that's handy later on. But it could be in a temp directory. And we're going to say uh, hello test.php. Every test lives inside of a class, and it needs to extend a common base class in PHP unit. 
it is this guy. And we say public function test. We need something to test, so let's test our multiplication. So generally tests are built around assertions. We have some piece of logic that we've run. For example, we say that the product is 2 times 2. And we have some expected value, which is 4. And we assert that the uh, expected value is equal to the actual value. I'm going to rename product to actual because this is a very generic formulation that you'll see in many tests. You come up with the actual value, come up with the expected value, compare them. All right, so very small file. We take a look over here and we say PHP unit run this file. It's going slow again. Oh, good point. So traditional PHP unit, you just give the PHP unit tool as the command and the file or directory of tests that you want to execute. Pretty simple. Um, if we put in some incorrect data and we run it, then it complains that there was an error that 4 does not match 7. That's true. All right. Moving along. Um, when you look at test tools online, there will be two general styles of test tools that come up most often. One is the X unit pattern. Uh, PHP unit is the example in PHP, but you will find a Java unit. Q unit is in JavaScript. N unit in Microsoft.net um, and dozens of others. And it's based on this pattern of c compute an actual value, compute an expected value, compare them. You will also find a style of testing um, which is best represented by Ruby on Rails and their Cucumber test framework, where you express your business goals in a vaguely English syntax and then translate down, down into code. Um, we're not going to touch on that right now because the Civi core doesn't do any of that. It's out there. It's perfectly legitimate. Um, what you will notice is that there are a number of tools available for executing tests. So in PHP, we've got PHP unit code section. BHAT is an example of the Gherkin language applied to PHP projects and PHP spec. Um, we use a few of these tools, but not all of them in Civi core. If you are writing an extension or something outside of Civi, you can use any tool you want. <laughs> okay a breath. We've passed testing 101 and we've moved on to testing 201. Congratulations. How do we experience tests in Civi CRM? The first way you are likely to experience it is through GitHub and Jenkins. Anytime a developer proposes a patch to Civi CRM, it shows up on GitHub in this list of pull requests and we can take a look at it. There's a list of changes that this guy has proposed. And next to a few of the changes, there's a colored icon. And down at the bottom, there's a details link. If we click on this colored icon, or if we click on the detailed link, it takes us over to the Jenkins test server, which displays output from running the test suite automatically. Uh, in this case, it's a little bit suspicious. Uh, it says something has failed. But it's not telling us what failed exactly. Check style, zero warnings. So we would take a look at the console output. And we see that it failed to apply the patches. So there's actually a merge problem with that proposed change. All right, 
Let's find another one that might be more interesting. <laughs> So here I've gone to another pull request and checking out the issues. It's run some tests and it spits out a list of source code uh, formatting warnings telling us that there needs to be different spacing and different tabs and so on in the file. Okay, that's interesting. And can we get something with a PHP unit test failure? Well, in any event, you'd be looking at these screens, going from the PR to Jenkins, and it would tell you test failed or test passed. The other way in which you'll often interact with tests in Civi CRM is by running them on the command line on your local machine. So here, I need to go to the Civi CRM folder, and I run a command like PHP unit. This is a small variation on what we ran here, where it was PHP unit four. Now we're running tool scripts PHP unit. And, oops. and we would give it a class name. Now this class name maps to a file using a fairly predictable structure. If we look under tests PHP unit, there is a folder called CRM, which matches this CRM, and then core, and then region. So we have class CRM core region test, which extends civi unit test case, and it has a function test blank and then test default and test override. And each of these is following a formula of figure out some actual value, declare the expected value, and compare them. Yes. How is that handled? So the question for the mic is what happens if you have two pull requests which individually don't have failures but taken together do have failures, right? So one observation is that the probability of that happening has been pretty low. I actually can't think of a time that's happened yet. There is another fallback which would catch that situation. The, there are two ways we're most likely to catch that situation. One is that both pull requests get merged and then somebody else's pull request starts to fail. And we start asking questions, why does this fail? And we look at the patch and we look at the failure and it doesn't match up. And so then somebody does a git bisect to figure out why it failed. Um, the other way we can catch it is we can go to test.civicrm.org, which is the server that runs the test suite automatically, and look at the test matrix. Now the test matrix runs every six hours, every eight hours, some period like that, and spits out the full test results for the overall system. Um, and it only tests the merged code. So this will run after those PRs have been merged, and it will start to fail. And for each pull request, does it take like six hours to test? Or? So the question is, um, for each pull request, does it take six hours to test? Uh, the answer is no. And the reason is that we prioritize tests differently in pull requests versus nightlies. So in pull requests, we're concerned about the, the responsiveness. right? We want to get something out quickly. Um, and in the nightly or thrice daily tests, we're more concerned about the thoroughness. Um, so 
We'll touch on this a little bit more in a moment about how they're different. We haven't touched on the necessary concept quite yet. So how is it any harder working with Civi to test than working with PHP unit? Because you can go out there and read some PHP unit documentation and figure out how to do this stuff. Why is Civi any different? The main issues are integrating with content management systems, which are very large systems, and they have a number of services that tie into Civi. If those services aren't available, then your test might not be working correctly. Another issue is paths. If your test needs to load specific files, those files might be in a different location depending on someone's installation. In Drupal and in WordPress, the file paths to the Civi content are all quite different. Also from developer workstation to developer workstation, they're different. Same thing goes with URLs. We also have a complication with databases. What happens when you write a test that puts a new record into the database and that record stays around and gets used somehow in another test later on. And extensions, and we have different package types. So there's the core repository, and there's the Drupal module repository, and the WordPress plugin repository. And these are actually different kinds of things that we're dealing with. The secret, I believe, to understanding testing in Civi is understanding how the system boots. If you know how the system boots, if you know how the paths and the URLs and the databases work out, then you'll understand the environment that you're testing in. Um, and loosely, the way the system boots can be summarized by th about three variables. One variable is Civi CRM settings, which is the path to the settings file. When you look in that settings file, you'll see Civi CRM UF which is the name of the framework that you're running, Drupal or WordPress, and you'll see the DSN, which is the database that it's running against. Um, you see. That sounds a little bit abstract, so let's write a test that actually does some Civi CRM booting. We'll go back to our original test. This is just plain PHP unit, doesn't have anything to do with Civi, but what we want is to include Civi here. So, as part of setup, I'm going to say eval CV PHP boot. Now, CV is probably unfamiliar to most of you. Um, it's a fairly new tool, and it was written specifically to support testing and specifically to provide access to Civi CRM in about one line of code in any PHP script. And it's this line, eval PHP boot. Um, to explain what Civi does, it's a bit like Drush. It's a command line tool for interacting um, with Civi. You can use it to make API calls like CV API system.get or you can do contact.getID equals one. You can evaluate a small snippet of PHP code. Uh, let's say print R of Do return so it actually when we enter that line it's it locates Civi CRM by going up to it locates Civi CRM and executes the script and prints out the result right how does it locate Civi CRM? It looks in the current directory to see if there's a file named Civi CRM.settings.php, or it looks for a file named uh, sites all modules, or not sites all modules, sites default Civi CRM settings PHP, or it looks for the WordPress one, which might be WP content 
Um, I'm going to mess this up. It's something like WContent content files. So we see our PHP. I don't know all those paths. That's what the tool is for to figure that out. It does a search. It's moderately clever um, as long as you have um, files in the directory tree and you don't have a lot of sim links. Okay, so. For multi site, it's also not very clever. Um, but if we go back and we remember that there are these three variables that basically determine how CIVI CRM boots, and we know in multi site, each site has its own instance of CIVI CRM, then we can play with these variables. So what we could say is export CIVI CRM settings equals uh, var worldwide web sites other site example.com slash WCRM settings PHP. And then it would look for that file instead of doing a dynamic search of the directory tree. Do we have to do similar for UF? Ah, sometimes, but usually not. Uh, let's, let's, let's run the test and then we'll take a look at that. Uh, okay, so hello test. In theory, during setup, it should boot. So we say PHP unit four, hello test. Okay, so it didn't fail, that's cool. Now what if we do some CIVI CRM stuff? All right, so it says there's a problem with our new code, but what I'm happy to note is that the problem is with the assertion. This function executed. If we comment this out and we don't boot CIVI CRM at all and we run the test, then it, it complains that the function is not found. So we do need this PHP boot stuff. And since we're doing command line stuff and we're old school hackers, let's put in a printr and see what the data actually was. Uh -huh. All right, we'll rerun. Yeah. Okay, so it does do the printr, it also passes. Move that. Now it's a bit cleaner. All right, so Deepak, you asked about the CIVI CRM UF. And this is actually something where we have different tests in CIVI which handle the UF a bit differently. Um, and there is a phony user framework that we use in testing because it is faster and more reproducible. So we don't use it for all tests, but for a range of tests we do. And it is called um, CIVI CRM UF equals unit tests. Right? Now how do we tell the difference? Like what, what's the point of CIVI CRM UF equals unit tests? It's going to run against a different database. In that database, we can do all kinds of crazy things. We can delete all contact records. We can insert 100 contact records. We can edit the records that are there and cross-wire their properties into unnatural arrangements. And it won't mess up our test instance, uh, excuse me, it won't mess up the instance of CIVI CRM where we're clicking around and dealing with data. So. So, uh, so it does require some extra setup to have the test database available. And if you use BuildKit, then it will create that test database automatically. If you don't use BuildKit, 
then it takes a bit more work to create that test database. We might do a trial setting that up uh, here. I think it can be done, but I don't do it very often. So it, it'll be interesting to see that. But I, I think from, from the approach of doing first principles in this presentation, it might be good to try uh, setting that up. Let me think. So the difference between the tests, excuse me, between the UFs is that there's this helper called CRM core config singleton user system. And that helper has different functions depending on what CMS you boot into. All right. So normally when we run this command, the helper class that it finds is the Drupal one. That's because I'm working inside of a Drupal folder. If we specify CiviCRM UF equals unit tests and rerun it, then we actually get a different class here. If I specify WordPress, it's probably going to crash because I don't actually have <coughs> WordPress here. But if we were in the WordPress folder, then it would work. Um, OK, so what tests are there? And this goes back a little bit to Deepak's question on how, how long does it take to execute the tests when you submit a pull request? When you submit a pull request, we uh, run several of these tests, but not all of them. And I just want to do a quick breakdown of how those conceptual levels mapped into the CIVI CRM testing levels. For user level testing, we don't actually have a team of people that can do user level testing. We don't have like a, a classroom in the university where you can put them all in front of a computer and see if they're happy with the software. So we uh, often have put out alpha and beta releases. That would take several months to get feedback. Uh, nowadays, we're also doing the release candidates where we put out a tarball towards the end of the month and then a week later that becomes stable. And the intention is that in that week, users who care about it can do testing. We also have a number of integration tests and Civi is actually very heavy on integration tests with a few shades of gray in how we uh, structure those integration tests. So web test is a fairly high level integration test that simulates a web browser running against a Drupal site with Civi CRM, clicking on various buttons and looking at what HTML is coming out. E2E, all tests, is slightly lower level. It's focused more on web services than on clicking around in a browser. Upgrade test does a full installation of Civi CRM, loads new code, and checks to see if the installation can be upgraded to the new code. Going down one level, it's sort of halfway between integration testing and unit testing. We have our API tests. These focus on the business logic of functions like, like this guy, Civi CRM API 3 contact get. Um, we usually think of these as unit tests because they're lower level than the web tests. They are technically integration tests because they involve a database. They involve some kind of bootstrap. We only have a handful of pure unit tests in Karma, which is a JavaScript framework. And we have some code style checks, which you could consider a unit test because it's taking a raw source file and checking that single source file. The upgrade test, is it just, it runs an upgrade and checks but they kind of, you, your upgrade has been successful? Exactly. So we have a library of about a dozen database snapshots for Civi CRM at various versions, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4. And what the upgrade test will do is set up a Drupal site, load the old database snapshot, and then execute the current upgrade routine against that. And so we talked a little bit about the different databases. Um, the big difference between web test and E2E and upgrade test is that they have 
real live access to a CMS database and a city database. After you run that test, you can go into the database and see what's happened. Um, the other tests are all headless, meaning they work with the fake database. If you click around in the GUI, you're not going to be, see any of that information available. Wrapping up Testing 201, um, there's a few links that are useful. Civi CRM Build Kit will create a new instance of Civi with a CMS and configure it for executing test cases. The CV command, which we used here, is available for download standalone. And there's some more documentation about testing generally in Civi under Testapalooza and about the specific suites that are in core under testing in the README. Ah, CV, so the question is, why is CV not part of BuildKit? It is part of BuildKit. I point it out because some people may not be using BuildKit and it's a new thing in this presentation. Um, yeah. I'll just pull up that page real quick. So if you need to work with CV directly, it has some notes about mm -hmm. Uh, environments that, where it can automatically detect the CMS and environments that we have not tested yet. It may auto detect the CMS, it may not. And it has some notes on how to download it. Like with a lot of the tools in BuildKit, um, it's mostly used and tested under some kind of Unix, Linux, or OS X, Windows. Good luck, let me know how it goes. Uh, do we have any questions, any more questions from testing 201? All right, testing 301, more advanced topics, but fortunately a short thing. Um, this is getting more into policy elements. Uh, the first policy is that within each test suite, there's only one style of boot. So within the web test suite, you're always going to boot up Civi the same way. Within E2E, you're always going to boot it up the same way. Now that's different from how it boots in CRM, but within CRM, it's always going to boot the same way. So as a rule of thumb, when you look at a test in a new suite, you might need to ask, how is this thing booting up? What's the environment that we're running in? The other policy is that all the test runners that are managed by civicrm.org, by the core team, are part of test.civicrm.org. That is the website we pulled up here, which has the matrix and which shows the test results. The last bit of policy. Ah, so we've been discussing extensions and how to make them more official. There's another session where we're gonna talk about Lexum and why this is, matters, but Certain extensions like Civi Rules, Civi Volunteer, Civi SIPA, they're becoming more important in the community. And I'm not trying to put any of those authors on the spot, but I think that it is in the long-term interest of our community if um, they have some tests and those tests are executed whenever someone proposes a change to the core repo because they're important extensions. The most advanced section, also hopefully pretty short, uh, changes that have happened to testing in the past year or two. One, you need to install CV to run the test suite. If you don't have it, then it won't be able to boot. Two, um, the file civicrm.settings.php has had some changes to f make it easier to specify which settings file and which UF you're working with. And I'll just give a quick example of that. If I look at the settings.php file here, in the past, there, there would just be this line. Let's zoom in. So in the past, we would have just said that. Nowadays, the settings file will look at your environment and try to auto-detect what UF you want from the environment. If it doesn't find an environment variable, 
then it will fall back to using Drupal or WordPress or whatever. The other change in here is that we have a few checks which determine whether we're running in a real environment or in the test environment. So if we are, if we've specified that the user framework is unit tests, then we're going to use a different DSN. If we have not specified unit tests, then we're going to fall back and use our normal DSN for connecting to the database. How is unit tests different from a CMS dependent environment? Does it not take CMS into account? Or? So the question is, how is unit tests different from a CMS specific environment? Um, in a few ways. One is that the CMS-specific environment has access to a whole bunch of services from the CMS, right? So if you want to fire Drupal hooks or if you want to fire Joomla events or WordPress actions, then that would actually happen in each of those places. In the unit test environment, it doesn't fire any of those. It only uses Civi internal hooking. Um, also, if you use a function like uh, CRM utils system URL and you ask how do I get the URL for the dashboard this will return a different value in the unit test framework versus the CMS. So unit test basically means only Civi CRM boot up, uh, yeah, bootstrap? Yeah. Correct, it means only Civi CRM will bootstrap. Lastly, there is a helper that is deprecated called civics test. Civics test tried really hard to be clever about synchronizing your unit test environment with your live environment and the settings that are needed for your extensions, but that often fell down. And so don't use it. Instead, be conscious of what settings <coughs> file you're using and be conscious of what framework or UF you've got activated. However, you can still use the generate test helper, which gives you a skeletal code for a test and an extension. And you can still use the standalone PHP unit command. Um, I want to note one place where the variables, Civi CRM UF and Civi CRM settings are pretty important, is if you go into sites all modules, Civi CRM, right? And remember that we ran, oops, fine. We ran the test earlier by saying tool scripts PHP unit and then CRM core region test, right? This still works. This is the way that people have been invoking tests in Civi for five years or more, right? It's there for backwards compatibility. However, if you try to integrate with an IDE or with other tooling, it's going to throw a couple cogs in, in the system, a couple wrenches into the cogs. And it's easier if you understand how to use PHP unit directly. So normally to use PHP unit directly, you'd give the, the path to the file. And it's giving us some errors. Well, that sucks. What are the errors here? Uh, okay, so the very first message, it says populate DB requires Civi CRM UF equals unit tests. That's because um, this particular test case, and actually all of the tests which have this as part of their name, are based on resetting the test database. That's very dangerous. It's deleting all of the contact records, all of the option values, and all the custom fields, and setting up new ones. Right? You don't usually want to do that if you have um, a site that you're working with interactively. So it needs to run inside unit tests, and you need to specify that the environment will be Civi CRM UF equals unit tests. And now the test runs. But if we go back to our chart, yes? Just to, just to save yourself having to type that, would you just use 
something You could do bash aliasing. And I, that's actually what the tool scripts, that's basically what this is for. Right. This command will automatically figure out if it needs to use that variable and then put it in. Um, where this is really useful is when you're configuring an IDE. Um, I don't know if we really want to drill down on that right now, but it, it's really helpful to know so that it's there. I think you're going to demonstrate doing the IDE, but you plan on that in the second hour. Ah, I don't have it on the agenda, but I we can do it's it. It's really good to show people how much nicer yes. it is, because it really is. I've got to the point where I won't use a laptop, because I've got two laptops and one of them. The only thing wrong with it is that I haven't got that configured properly. So <laughs> Eileen is saying <laughs> for the, the microphone that running tests in the IDE is so much easier and you shouldn't even use a computer if it doesn't have an IDE that's configured <laughs> to run unit tests. Yeah. All right. So this is the same test we looked at before, uh, but we've pulled it up in the PHP unit, excuse me, in an IDE, which is called PHP Storm. And PHP Storm is a little tricky when you first get started because you need to configure four or five different things. <laughs> There's a wiki page which has screenshots about how to do the configuration. Um, very loosely, I think the screenshots show us going into, let's see, <coughs> PHP Storm Preferences, and then we do a search for PHP Unit, and in here we need to give a path to PHP Unit, the executable <laughs> command, which is included with BuildKit, and we need to give a path to a configuration file, which is included with Civi CRM. We have another configuration screen under Run Edit Configurations, where we specify some default values that are used anytime PHP Unit runs. So anytime we do PHP Unit with Civi, we probably want to change over to this specific folder, and most of the time we want to set that environment variable to be unit tests because most of our tests require it. Uh, since I'm using MAMP, I have some special directives here, but we don't need to talk about those right now. Okay, that's a default configuration. How does it work when we actually run a test? We go to run, debug, and this is a little hard to read because you need to recognize the icon that shows up in this drop-down to choose the right one. <laughs> Uh, the correct one is PHP with a green check mark. So you run the tests, you get a pass, that's the green check mark. And we're going to do debugging on this. So it's executing the test. Give some feedback here with the spinny icon. The test passes. If we take a look up here in our run menu, this meant these first three options are now filled in. I can hit Control D to run the test again in debug mode. So Control D, and we get our spinny animation again. If we go into Edit Configurations, there is now a configuration describing this specific test, and it copied in all of the values from the defaults, but added bits for our specific test. Now, what's really cool about using the IDE is that you can have assertions, excuse me, you can have breakpoints, um, perhaps put them right next to this assertion in one of our tests. And we hit debug, control D again. <clears throat> and if we go over to our debugger, it stops execution when it hits this line. And we can see content inside of dollar sign actual and the content inside of dollar sign expected. And you can actually climb up the stack and see the variables in the earlier functions. Maybe That's like right. Function that you your debug, you know, so let's do that. 
So Eileen is pointing out that this stack is actually much more useful than it seems yes. in our demo here because it can, you can put breakpoints anywhere in the application. So I wonder how does Smarty handle the rendering? So let's go down and we pick some weird place. Uh, let's do right about here. Now I hit Control D again. It runs the same test. And in our debug statement, uh, excuse me, in our debugger, we can see a backtrace, which is uh, has stopped at the line we specified. And then this is the function which called that. And this is the function which called that. And we can go into each of them and look at the set of variables that are available. So we're running it on a file which is not a test. Correct. Ah, I, so I am running it on a file which is not a test. And the reason that works is because in PHP Storm, you have a this specific test is the one in the menu linked to control D. If we, and that's actually pretty handy most of the time because you might be looking at a test case in here and then you go write a patch in some other file and then you rerun the test again. When you sort of change what you're working on, right? If we finish work on the region test and we want to go do something else completely different, right? We might look at the contact test which is a completely different class and a completely different suite. In that case, we need to say debug here. It's not a specific test that we're debugging. We're doing the debug submenu, the dot, dot, dot. And we get our pop-ups and our mysterious icons. Um, this one looks about right. Do you know you can also right-click on them to bring the test options for that particular class? Right-click and debug. Okay, so Eileen is saying that you can right-click on the class name? Yeah, and then maybe on debug. Debug. All right. And so now we get our spinning animation next to the contact test. That's a good point. Uh, so this is taking a while to execute. The question is, can we generate tests from here? Uh, <coughs> we can certainly make a new PHP file and type in the directives. So if you take the approach that you've learned PHP unit to begin with, and you're going to then do a little bit of city stuff, it shouldn't be that hard to just make a test class, right? Because all you need to do is have class something extends something. Um, The thing you extend will also vary a bit depending on the suite that you're in. I've tried to provide a mapping uh, in the readme file. <coughs> Oops. Yeah. OK, so I think it's 1030 right now. And it's time for a five minute or 10 minute break. Okay, cool.